This is the Classical Cafe. I'm Caitlin Matson, and this is the Green Room with Dr. Timothy Shea from Wichita State University. Uh, Timothy is the director of bands. Hello. Hi there, Caitlin. So good to have you on again. You know, we saw you uh, a lot this summer here in the Green Room because you started the Wichita Wind Symphony. That's correct. We were we were talking quite a bit about their inaugural season. It was a, a fun time. Absolutely. Uh, taking the fall off there, um, I imagine mostly because your uh, Wichita Wind Symphony is filled with music educators who are That's right. busy. Yeah. They were quite busy in the fall, and actually, so were we. Uh, so we we decided that we had a couple of concerts kind of scheduled in the fall season, but it made a little bit of sense for us to take a pause. So we will fire back up again in January. Uh, we've got several several concerts starting in January. We're going to kind of go January, March, and then into the summer season again. I think with the Wichita Wind Symphony. So rest assured, we'll be back. <laughs> So I think that anybody who was born and raised um, knowing music or involved in music at school, uh, we were all first band nerds. And I say that with all the love in my heart. I mean, Uh that's a term of endearment as far as I'm concerned, a band nerd. Um, And the band program at Wichita State is known as being top tier. I appreciate that. I would like to think so. I'm I'm biased, though, because I'm in charge of it. So naturally, I think so as well. (laughs) Yes, but you um, can also acknowledge the lineage and the icons that came before you. Oh, absolutely! I mean, some some of the top notch, uh, not just educators that were my predecessors, but also wonderful students that have gone on to to significant careers, both as educators and performers that have come through our program at Wichita State. It's actually I wasn't aware of it before I earned the position mm. uh, and started looking at the list of alums. It's quite significant. Yeah, it's it's really, really remarkable. Yeah, a strong program. Uh, how many bands are there at the university? Well, sit down bands. Uh, we have two concert ensembles, as I call them, the wind ensemble and the symphonic band. Then we have our athletic band cohort, which currently has two and sometimes breaks into smaller groups to do different events. And then our jazz ensembles are sometimes, you know, included in that in the band program. And we have two large jazz ensembles, our jazz arts ensemble one and jazz arts ensemble two, and then various combos there. And so that kind of makes our whole wind cohort, if you will, uh, of our bands. All right. I want to focus a little bit in on the Shocker Sound machine. So Shocker Sound has just been the general term for the pet band um, for years. But 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 right. several years ago, was it 2018? I think or- that's right. Yes. Um, you had the idea for Shocker Sound Machine. Tell us what that is. What's the difference? What does the sound machine do? Great question. So Shocker Sound is your basketball pep band. That's the one that most people know about. You see them in the stands at all the Shocker basketball games. Uh, But Shocker Sound Machine is, for lack of a better word or term, uh, an indoor marching band. And we had a lot of students coming to Wichita State that really wanted a marching band experience of some flavor. They loved it in high school. They were very interested in continuing. They got to feel like jocks, I think, you know. Um, Mm, It's definitely, it's an athletic activity, you know, Uh, and the music tends to be a little bit different. Uh, And so we were trying to fill that void for those students. You know, how can we get this to happen? And so we decided to look into what Drum Corps International was doing, which is a a summer event typically. That's a professional based marching band. cohort, if you will. It's a, it's a lot of, there are a lot of cores and a lot of different type of ideas. There was also a thing called sound sport, which was happening in a smaller arena, similar to a basketball court. And they're based in dance, based in a, a lot smaller unit. And we said, I wonder if we could do that. Could we create something that our students could be involved with on the basketball court since we don't have a football team? And we approached our administration about it and they were very excited. Uh, we sort of polled some students they were even more excited. And now we are five years later and uh, we've got 75, 80 students involved in Shocker Sound Machine. And uh, it's a lot of fun. In fact, they had their first performance of the season uh, on Monday night at the first Shocker basketball game here on campus. So yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. We're going to talk a lot more about this because um, I, 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 
it's difficult for people to really grasp or understand the full power <laughs> and the full experience of being in an yeah. arena with a shocker sound machine. It is far more than just, like you said, it's not, it's not just a pet band and it's mm -hmm. different than, it's a little bit different than an outdoor marching band. Absolutely. And there's something about it that's just, I'm, I'm going to say this word because it's the only word that comes to mind. It, there's something much sexier about it. It's, oh, sure. it's a, you know what I mean? It's yeah. a fantastic experience. We're yeah. going to talk more about it, but first let, we're going to take a small break and just and listen to some, uh, some music composed specifically for brass and percussion, which uh, a lot of times doesn't get nearly as much attention as symphonic music, which is a shame. Yeah. Uh, we're going to hear a movement from symphony for brass and percussion by composer Alfred Reed. And we will be back to talk more with Dr. Timothy shade. That is a, <laughs> that is a piece by Alfred Reed, a Symphony for Brass and Percussion. And I have Dr. Timothy Shade, the director of bands from Wichita State University, joining me in the green room, talking not only about, uh, as he calls them, the sit down bands, but also the <laughs> athletic bands and the newest addition to uh, the athletic band department um, is the soccer sound machine, this right. incredible, you call it high octane experience. Um, you know, uh, Wichita State has not had a marching band ever since they lost their football team. That's right. Yeah, it was in the, I think, I can't remember the exact date because I wasn't here, but it was close to 80, 1980, I think. And um, the, there was a, uh, you know, the plane crash and the marching band actually continued for a couple of years after that. And then it, it went away uh, as they didn't find a need for it because of no football team. But there's a lot of alumni around that are still teaching or are still floating around that always sort of like right after I got the job here, they started saying, hey, what do you think about a marching band? I mean, they really wanted it to come back. And so that was also what gave it a little bit more fuel when we started thinking about starting something else. Uh, they were like, yeah, we would help. Let's go. Let me know how we could be helpful. You know, so I think it's there's always been a lot of energy towards creating a marching ensemble again uh, here at Wichita State. So the soccer sound machine will, you know, take take the take the floor during halftime. Mm -hmm. Only select halftime games because there's so many things, of course, like you know, announcements and things like that. So we have to pick and choose what we can do. But the idea is we get about seven minutes on the floor, and so the thought was, how much can we pack into seven minutes? that's really entertaining. And so if you think about, if you watch like, I don't know, a football game on Saturday, college marching band, right? You're gonna see Ohio lots of- Ohio State. That's right, which I'm from Ohio, so I know that very well. You're gonna see lots of pictures, like there'll be a hundred or 300 members in the marching band. So you'll see big pictures from high above. Well, we don't have that vantage point. So you're looking at them from probably about a 30 to 40 degree angle versus a much higher spot. So how you can counteract that is with a lot of fast movements. So it's a lot more dance based. The other thing was we knew that the uniform had to be something that was a little bit louder. So <laughs> we designed something that would be a little bit shinier. So there's a lot of buttons. There's also a shirt that they wear underneath that's black and yellow with lots of wild designs. So that way you could see the players easier versus something a little bit more traditional. We bought a brand new horn line when we did this. That's a brass line. So that way it's very shiny as well. So the whole thought is as you're watching them, there's a lot of color coming at you um, amongst them moving very quickly as well. Uh, in the first season, I did the first set of arrangements that were adapted and messed with. So that way it kind of set the tone. Somebody may ask why the shocker sound machine? Well, there's this thing called Miami Sound Machine that sort of was in my head that was uh, sort of set up by Gloria Estefan because I was in Miami and everybody kind of knows how cool that was. And that's kind of where that came from in my head. There's this idea of energy and propulsion and lots of excitement with a machine. And so that was why uh, we didn't want to lose the Shocker Sound moniker, but we wanted to give something else to the idea of, of something that direction. And it just kind of stuck. I didn't know that it would stick, but the students like it. And so now people just kind of call it the machine. I love which that. Is kind of funny on campus. And, uh, so. and anybody who's experienced any sort of marching band, whether it's the competition, the the drum and bugle corps, international, you know, you see it televised. Sometimes it's on PBS, or right. you know, sometimes they come through the area. You know, they stay the night around in the Hutchinson area, or maybe Newton, and they they give a show. You know, or you can go watch yeah. rehearsal. Um, 
or, or, you know, you're watching your own kids in high school, you're aware of the drum line, of course, um, and the excitement of watching percussionists, you know, you're aware of the fact you're watching uh, an intense physical feat. I mean, they are athletes. Um, That's right. And you put all this indoors, though. Suddenly there's a roof and there are walls. I imagine <laughs> that the sound just blows you over. You can feel it in your body, your bones. That's right. It is a lot more vibrative. And it's a really interesting experience inside a Coke Arena because Coke Arena is a big circle. So, you know, in the bowl. And so, yeah, we had to think about that. That's a really great point, Caitlin, because when you're on a football field, usually you're playing to one side. So now we have a 360 degree arena that we have to start thinking about and the sound reverberates everywhere. You're exactly right. It is a much more visceral experience, particularly with large shots on the drums, which we call gawks. That's what they're called. It's where you hit it with the stick and it hits on the side of the drum and it's very loud. Bass drums, which are very big, it is very visceral. That's a really great point. Yeah, particularly in that arena. And if somebody wanted to, I mean, let's face it, sometimes we plan our athletic experiences around the band that we get to see during halftime. If somebody right. wanted to go to a Wichita State basketball game specifically to see Shocker Sound, where would they find that information of what games you're you're performing at? You'd have to actually reach out to us. We don't publicize it terribly well. Um, we like to be a little sneaky that way, in all honesty. Mm. Uh, so they could reach out to me or actually our athletic band director is Professor Lucas Hewlett. Um, he's the one that has the lowdown on when all their performances are. And the other thing about that, too, is sometimes that that group and not sometimes often they're off campus quite a bit. Uh, so this group is really mobile so they can be out and about performing at special events. So uh, if you're ever curious about where their appearances are, he would be the person to reach out to yeah, uh, I can probably get that information. But he's the boss. What kind of events, alumni events or um, oh, yeah. they were uh, out recruiting? Uh huh. So they actually have been known to go out to do some high school games at times to sort of make appearances there, uh, random events, whether it's a, a, a sporting event or some flavor of a side-by-side -side concert with some other groups. Uh, they have done alumni events. They were at one last night, as a matter of fact, uh, supporting the Alumni Association. They do do parades, but they will not march in the same capacity that we're used to seeing sort of a traditional core style marching, which is one of the things I love. They do it a little bit differently. Uh, the drum line has its own identity. Sometimes it'll just go perform for different events and things. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's they They do a lot of different, uh, you know, fun and exciting sort of little show ups or pop ups here or there. I just think it's so great. Um, and. And, the, you know, the thing that a lot of times people forget is that they would not be able to do what they do if they weren't first and foremost, incredibly talented and disciplined musicians. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think that's the, that's the coolest part, right? If we think about this, you can do the walk and chew gum thing, which we make fun. We go, all of us can do that. Now think about playing, just playing the piano or something that we all naturally know is difficult. Now think about that as an instrument. Now think about walking while doing that. Now think about doing choreography while doing that. Now think about doing choreography, marching, and going <laughs> to certain spots on the court while doing that. Yeah, I'm and already kind of, tired. Whoa. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's like, yeah, it's pretty incredible what they can put together as far as their shows are concerned. Thank you so much for coming on the green room and talking with me about this. It's been on my mind for a while now wanting, you know, to have an interview with you because I just, I just think it's so great. Congratulations on absolutely. what you're in your fourth, fifth year now. Fifth year now. Yep. Absolutely. Well, yeah, wonderful. Absolutely. Yep. Thanks so much. Yeah. And if for, for more information about any of the events going on at the school of music, uh, go to the Wichita state university website. Also the school of music has, a, has an active Facebook page as well. Thank you so much, Dr. Timothy shade. Thanks Caitlin.